Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, June 19th, 2022. I'm Jeff, and I need to click the button. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Good Turn Lakes, episode number 652. And happy pride in me for getting to make sure the audio is working. Ooh, pride! Yay! Connect. Need to connections like that. There we go. We're back. And somebody <laughs> has, and somebody has a really uh, wonky connection with the internet, uh, uh, and not dealing with the sweltering heat. And I'm supposed to have an internet person here, but the the, the my the, our connection to the stream just broke down for a second there. Uh... Yep. And so I waited until it came back, and it did, which was expected because okay. that's that's what's happening with me right now. Apparently, somebody uh, decided to disconnect their internet without properly having having it uninstalled by attack. Apparently, there is actually something they need to do in order to make sure everything goes smoothly, and some anybody else in the building's internet isn't interrupted. Oh. Anyways, yeah. So, That's folks, okay. if if you're going to cancel your internet, internet, let them do the tech thing. Let them know first, and they say, "Okay, we'll send the tech to uninstall," and they actually do something that you can't do yourself. Otherwise, Correct. I suppose if you're in your own home, that might be okay. But the more you know, yeah, I don't have that. Audio file. Ding. Up at oh, no, I do. I do. But, well, we'll be done. <laughs> but we were talking about how, how during prides, typically it's, uh, or at least from my experience, there's always sweltering heat. It's yes. It, pride is hot, and I don't just mean in, in the uh, bunch of black candy. Mm, fair. Yes. Um, so... As I was saying, um, Pride in Pride in Cincinnati is actually next weekend, and they're usually in June. Um, and for us, it'll be 92 on Sunday or Sunday, woo, Saturday. Whew, girl. Um, this, re- <laughs> this retake <laughs> got me. Uh, and it's been, and I've had the occasional Pride where it's been warm. And uh, the worst one, it sounds bad, but one of the worst ones, uh, there was a year that it was downtown, um, not like actually in the middle of downtown, like there was on Fountain Square, which is kind of a big you know, um, area, central area of the, our um, downtown area. And it's all, you know, asphalt and concrete and buildings that are like skyscrapers and you know sun shining down on windows and then reverberating down it was hot that day and to add to like being on concrete and being in the city it was it was it was it was sweltering it was it was bad it was so bad it wasn't um you know it could have been worse because it could have been a lot warmer than it was, but it was still that kind of just like walking around on concrete. And that's when they, they only did that one year. <laughs> Cause I think they realized the committee was like, um, bitch it hot and concrete and asphalt get hot and they don't absorb heat as well as like natural ground and earth do. Mm-hmm. So they moved it to, um, 
Sawyer Point, which is a park downtown-ish, um, closer to the river. And that allowed for some very unique thing to happen. While there was still concrete there, but there's, there's also a lot of like green space where people could just like stand in grass and, and move around without having to deal with all the all that heat. Mm. And some people would get cold. <laughs> So they oh, would wow. stop standing in the shade and go into the sun to warm right. up. <laughs> right. But I mean, no, you're right, David. Like it's all asphalt, it's all concrete, it's all like between buildings. So like, yeah, like as we're doing the mile and a half, roughly, like parade route, you know, up and down some kind of kind of rolling hills and stuff. Like there were points where I was kind of like, like, it's really warm. And when you get lots of people together in a space, like the heat just increases. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I ha- I don't know anything about that. Just singing two concerts with a bunch of people around me for an hour and a half. Yeah, mm-hmm. lights. And with lights. Oh, yeah, on stage with lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was an experience, to, to say the least. So, yeah, it... Uh, it was it was good. It was fun. It was the first time I've ever walked in the Columbus Pride, so uh-huh. I do want to thank um, our former uh, co-host uh, Chester, who uh, is who I was visiting and um, had asked if I wanted to walk with uh, Triton, Trident. Sorry, Trident. Um, the the leather group because all the pups were walking, so uh, and that was a, a fun experience to see that to. Um, be a part of it because I've never been in an actual pride parade like I've always been like working an event <laughs> it's kind of a thing or been on the sidelines um, so that was that was pretty fun uh, oh and before I forget uh, I want to give recognition to a patron who happened to be at pride uh, hey Q um, it was beautiful to see you and to give you a quick hug and my apologies that I said we were going to be at the festival after the parade and then we didn't see each other um, but it was spouting great. things off um, from a religious perspective. Uh-huh. And my favorite thing about it is that we were towards the end of the entire parade. Um, there was only about like maybe more eight more units behind us uh, in the parade. But there was a truck in front of us and the truck just kind of laid on the horn pretty much the whole way through the intersection, <laughs> like fucking out the noise or anything that was coming from the protest, uh, so to speak. And lots of people were cheering and yelling and screaming on purpose to make noise, like to mm. cover. It was, um, it was pretty nice. nice. Yeah. It was pretty nice. Um, so Columbus is known for, I mean, so Columbus, if, if you don't know, um, geography lesson for you folks. So Columbus is the capital city of Ohio. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it is one of the largest like pride festivals in the in the state. Um, it's well known. Um, I remember for many years, um, friends of mine would go from Cincinnati to Columbus to go to the pride festival because it was so big and popular, and, and always you know there's always a lot going on. Um, to add to that. Uh, Oh, her name just left my head. I think it was Ashley. Maybe not. Anyway, so there's a there's a viral video um, out there, and it's um, it is not Nina West, but it is her mother, um, Virginia her, West. Virginia West. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, doing um, this is me, and she's performing it um, in during the festival, and at near the end, she goes towards the protesters like full on, like on her own, like oh. by herself, heads towards the processors. And I mean, she's doing the song, This Is Me, and she's just kind of like, you know, if you know the song, it it was kind of a very powerful moment, mm-hmm. considering what was going on. So, yeah, I want to see if I can find that, because I really love that video. Yeah, um, it was interesting. Uh, Miss Carmen Carrera was the honored guest of Columbus Pride. Um, so, and I got to see her from a distance because she was part of the panel. So at Columbus Pride, um, when the Pride Parade passes the the booth where they announce the different like 
you know, people that are in the parade and that kind of stuff. Um, she was one of like the three or four people that had microphones that was sitting there and it was like, and I knew we were coming up on it cause you could hear them making the announcements and stuff, you know, and of course the crowd is like cheering and you know, all that. And we come up and, and just as we're passing, I looked to my right and I was like, Oh, there's Miss Carmen Carrera from drag race. Anyways, <clears throat> so yeah. And then I said to somebody who was like Mark walking with us cause I knew who they would know who she was. I was like, did you see who was there? They were like, what? And by then we were already like walking <laughs> on. So they didn't really get to see. And I was like, yeah. But um, it was good. So here's the thing for me uh, in my late 40s. This was the first pride I've ever walked in. Like I've I've always been like, you know, around. I've uh, watched. I've helped mm-hmm. organize. I'm going to be organizing this Saturday. I'm going to be coordinating um, the health and wellness zone for our own pride here in town. Um, but I'm not going to be in the actual parade. Uh, so it was interesting to actually be able to be involved, um, as that. So yeah, it, uh, it was, it was good. And it was, uh, it's, it's, I don't know how to explain it to people. Like it's, there's just something about it. And it's interesting because when I came out, um, pride did exist, but in my hometown, we didn't have a parade and we didn't have a festival. Um, at the time that I came out, we had a youth group for teens in high school called Closet Culture. Like that, that's something to give you a, like kind of a context. Like now, um, I think there's much more frequency that there are student groups at high schools, some type of like gay student alliance or gay lesbian student alliance or whatever they may call it, equity alliance. Um, and that, And that's just like part of what I wanted to discuss today is like, you know, how, how pride has changed. I mean, I don't want us to get on the soapbox that we've been on for the past couple of years about the corporatization of pride um, and how people, um, you know, really are kind of turned off by the whole, like, look at our stuff. It, aren't we great? We put a rainbow on shit, buy it, um, you know, or this is, this is how we're, you know, so supportive. Um, Cause I think some of that still does go on, but I also think that, uh, especially I kind of think since the pandemic, the year that we don't really talk about a lot more companies and corporations have started moving in the direction of DEI. So for those of you that don't know what that is, it's diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, companies are taking on officers, like actual manager coordinator positions. They're hiring people intentionally to address their workforce, to make sure that the things that are desired are being um addressed Mm -hmm. you know so that there is equity in the workplace in terms of policies and procedures and treatment and hiring and all that kind of stuff which i find very interesting um even in you know my my county government position that's a new thing that's come about in the past couple years so uh i think that there are definitely companies out there that are making strides i still think there are companies out there that are unfortunately co-opting and being like look there's a thing and you know Yay us, like we, you know, changed our logo briefly or whatever. (laughs) Distract with the rainbow. Yeah, and embrace the rainbow, as it were. (laughs) So, but but that being said, um, I think I just wanted us to kind of talk about like, you know, how things have changed over the years in terms of like what pride is. And here in 2022, you know, um, I don't know if it, it feels to me over the past handful of years, uh, so, well, past six years since 2016, 2017, more than ever, mm. it's important like to, to represent ourselves, like to be to be known, to be out there. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that everyone should go to work, um, mm. you know, like Damon is appearing today. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you do you, boo. Like if you, you know, want to make an entrance and you want to, you know be a, a colorful cockatiel um, in the workplace. <laughs> you could do that. But, you know, what I'm saying is, is, you know, just being yourself. Like, so here's an example. On Friday, um, I had to drive a bunch for my job and I had to stop and get lunch and I'm stopped for lunch. I go through the drive through. I pre-ordered through the app. I get up to the first window. They go to give me my receipt and I was caught off guard. The, the female presenting employee says to me, happy pride, like just out of the blue. And I was like, okay. And I was like, hi, happy, happy pride. And like, I went to go drive to the second window and I was like, what the hell? And then I looked down and I was like, oh, 
I have a lanyard. I wish I had it with me. It's downstairs. Um, that has all the striped colors of the progressive inclusive pride. Ah, and I, but I wear it every day at work. Like I, mm. I don't wear it just for pride. Like I've been wearing it ever since I bought it last year. And a lot of people are like, where'd you get that at? Like, I really like that. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so I have that. And then I have, it, it's not this watch band. Cause I just got to do one. Um, but I had a different watch band that had a bunch of stripes of pride that I switched okay. into for pride month. So I realized I was kind of advertising, <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the intent in the moment. Yeah. But, but it was nice. And it was cool that somebody just kind of said that out of the blue. And I was kind of like, Oh yeah. Okay. Like, um, yeah. But it's a very different than, you know, when I was much younger, you know, when I came out in 1992, <clears throat> which means I'm going on 30 goddamn years uh, <laughs> of being out, you know, that that just wasn't a thing. And yeah. and I mean, back in that time, God, this is really turning into an old man thing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, day. back. Right. Like, but at the time, there was a whole thing of. um you know, to see someone have a rainbow on their car or like, you know, in a, in a certain space or like whatever, like you would be like, do, do they know what that means? You know, like, are they, are uh -huh, they, uh -huh. are they, no offense, flagging? They, right. Like, you know, they, uh, right. Are they a friend <laughs> of duty? You know, like I mean, these were the things that we used to, you know, cause we, it just wasn't as open. It wasn't as out. Yeah. So it's, it's a very different uh, time and place we're in now. Yeah. Um, so it's rather interesting considering the concert I was just at. So I'm going to bring it to this. I'll start about that with that first. So, um, we just did our, the, the Sis Amen's course just did our, the last concert of our 31st season. So to kind of give a perspective, we had a guest, um, um, host, um, and she is a drag queen named Molly Mormon, and Mormon is spelled M-O-R-M-E-N. Um, but she, in her real life, um, um, is a former Mormon. She's from Utah, um, but she came out at 27, age 27, and moved here um, not too long after that. And um, it was very interesting hearing her speak regarding that situation and how she said one of the things, like she ends the concert with this mm -hmm. and she tells a story about how I didn't come out until I was 27 and I'm spending like this month, she is doing 30 events, mm -hmm. 29, 30 events over the course of Pride Month. Mm -hmm. And she, she's keeping herself busy. And she said, it's because, you know, one, you know, we just had a pandemic and we've not been able to really get out and be prideful and celebrate in with other people and in person and all that stuff. But um, she also is like, I'm making up for lost time because, you know, she's, she's, she said she's 27. I think she's now in her mid thirties. So not that long ago. Um, and I found it very interesting because we're not on the same story, but there's similarities. Um, my first pride wasn't until 2000. Um, I was I was in college. I was um, I had already known more about myself. Um, thank you, internet. Um, <laughs> found out about who and what I was, um, but I hadn't actually gone to pride. And my first pride actually wasn't in my home city. It was actually in Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, I had friends. Um, uh, so long story short, I was going to um, Ghana, West Africa for several weeks for school. Um, and I had two friends in Louisville, um, where I'm from, that were like, we don't want you to go to an area where you may have to hide a little bit more of yourself and not be able to experience this kind of thing. So we actually spent um, a weekend in Columbus, Ohio. Um, we I did a lot of things. There were a lot of firsts that weekend, and uh, I'll get to some of the rest of them in a minute. But um, Pride was the one thing they wanted me to experience. Now, mm -hmm. we did not see the parade. Um, I think we just went to the festival. 
And it was an eye-opening experience for me as a um, young gay man coming Mm -hmm. into himself and learning more about what, you know, all this is going to mean. And uh, I remember like little details. Um, (laughs) Which is funny, the big one being so the city had just passed um, at that point in time, they had passed the ordinance um, that allowed women to be bare chested. They had to still have something covering like like a PC or whatever, but they could walk around freely without um, a, you know, a bra or something. They could, you know, mm-hmm. so I saw a lot of titties. <laughs> I saw a lot of titties. Now, uh, interesting fact, Damon, that I believe is still legally the case in Columbus, but I was surprised yesterday how few I saw. Yeah. There was only two women out of literally thousands upon thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people at Pride. I only saw two women that had, mm-hmm. like, covered up their areolas. That was it. Now, yeah. it could be the weather. Yeah. To be it fair, was, if it, it was, was a cooler weather, you would have been more inclined to wear a top as opposed to no top. Yeah. But it, yeah, that was the thing I remember. And I know it seems funny that, you know, gay man, that's the thing I remember the most, but it was the thing I remember most because it was the big deal. It mm-hmm. was the thing. Um, the other thing, uh, which again, probably relates back to my being in the chorus. Uh, I got to hear the Columbus Gay Men's Chorus perform. Um, I think it was Columbus Gay Men's Chorus performing on stage. Um, and uh, I think they sang This Is The Moment um, from Jekyll and Hyde. So all the theater queens gag out. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I, I remember it because it was, it was just this, like, again, a group of people, group of men, group of gay men um, singing proudly and out and um, uh, people cheering and enjoying it and loving it. Um, I the worst part is I don't again like now when I think of of pride festivals I think of drag queens and performing and I don't remember there being a drag performer. I could mm. be totally wrong and there might have been and I but I may not have been paying attention because everything was going on. There was a lot going on that weekend. Um, yeah, so. Thinking now, um, I'll be honest, um, I've marched in the parade a couple of times. Um, My body continues to tell me no. (laughs) So um, this will probably be, I did it a few years ago, I think 2019 or 2018. And that was one of the last times I've marched. But I marched with um, Cincinnati Leather, the pup and all that stuff community. I I kind of did all that. And I enjoyed it, but man, is it exhausting. Um, We had decided to do a, um, the big like leather pride flag, like everyone held like a corner or an area and kind of walked with it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then a bunch of people were on a, um, a truck with like, you know, standing and dancing around with music. And it was tiring. It was long. And I don't think our pride route is as long as the one in Columbus. Mm. But it was also raining off and on, like sprinkling. It didn't get too bad, but um, I remember it just being so exhausting and the adrenaline from like an audience and being out there and being with the people that's wonderful and amazing and i was so happy to have that but at the end of it despite all the water despite all the um precautions made to like you know i wore i think i didn't wear my boots i think i wore just like some simple um I wore sneakers and I had, I even added insoles to kind of help. Dogs were barking, the feet were hurting. Um, The back was killing me. And 
I just, I know now um, that's going to always be the case, uh, unfortunately. So this is the way I present my pride. Um, I can have my fun with my little rainbows. I can do a flag. Um, I will probably more than likely for this festival this weekend go down just in time for um, the call of the chorus's performance, do the chorus's performance, walk around for a little bit to just see people and, and encounter things and hang out, and then head the fuck home. Because mm. if it's going to be 92, I don't know if, again, physically, I'm going to be okay. Right. Um, so as it's kind of talking about, like, we're in our 40s. Um, plus, um, I, okay, let's, let's drop that list. Okay. So pre-diabetic, um, uh, hypertension, um, high blood pressure, uh, <laughs> not so important, but diverticulitis and, um, all those things. So I take so many pills in a day to keep myself, you know, regulated. Mm-hmm health wise and all of those things too much exertion can be a problem right so and heat is a big thing there too so as i've grown older and watch been you know checking myself i know i have to be really careful about what i do and how long i do things for right. um i was so happy so happy that we decided to put an intermission in this concert um, so with the chorus recently, this past season, we've been doing our concerts live and it's been great, but we've decided because of COVID to shorten them to like one acts. Mm -hmm. The idea being that, you know, we're all singing, we're re wearing masks. Um, our audience would be wearing masks at least for the first two that it just would have been too much like air race, um, you know, stuff in the air to kind of potentially pass on. So if it was best, we just, you know, the board and us decided to shorten the concerts. This last one, we decided originally, the original plan was to do a full, like full on out concert, but then it was decided let's do a smaller concert, but split it in half somewhat. So that there's not as much time standing on the risers, as much time, you know, with people in a small cramped space singing. Um, we ended up, because of a recent spike in COVID cases within the chorus itself, to go ahead and wear masks again. Like, originally we weren't going to wear masks at all, but we decided this time to wear masks again. But... I learned very quickly um, I cannot do a full concert anymore. Because, mm. you know, I've gotten older. My back is bothering me. I'm fatter. And um, I need a break. And um, our artistic director and other people in the chorus board also realize that our audience is getting older and so is our chorus mm -hmm. and we need to pay attention to the fact that some of us cannot stand on our feet for a 60 minute act and then maybe get a 15 minute break and then have to do another 40 minutes so we're changing things up starting like this was a good like good concert to kind of get that like break and in and now we're going to move i think that's going to be the process going forward the shorter shows with a smaller intermission to kind of help everyone not just the chorus but everyone else but again it is a sign like you know it is a thing like we're all getting older um and i don't like we don't like thinking about it but you may need to take some precautions to Make sure everyone's okay. Yeah. 
Right. I mean, and that's the the big, you know, thing <laughs> you learn as you kind of get older. It's like rule number one, hydrate. Rule number two, uh, know your uh, limits. Mm-hmm. And uh, probably rule number three, uh, these could all be in any order. Uh, sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> like. Yeah, you're you're probably going to have exposure and you're not going to know uh, quite what it is. So be ready. And FYI, sunscreen is for everyone. Sunscreen is for everyone. Just because you are melanated does not mean that you don't need sunscreen. Correct. There's an entire song about somebody giving a speech to a high school graduation. I think it was a high school graduation. Maybe it was a college one. Where he says, if I can give you one piece of advice... Use sunscreen. I think it's called Every, Everybody's Free to Wear Sunscreen. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, things, things are just different now um, in mm-hmm. terms of, you know, the experience and what people can have. Um you know, I saw this thread recently. A bunch of people were complaining about, like, you know, the corporatization of Pride and, like, you know, the whole um, paying for access thing, which I didn't say anything. But since I'm here on the podcast, I'll say something now. Go um, for it. Well, because I'm not a part of this thread and it's kind of regional. And because mm. I don't live in that region, I didn't say anything. But I got real annoyed because people were just basically venting and they're like, you know. It feels like they always have their hand out for money and they're asking for a donation and blah, 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 you know, and I don't have that much money and this and that, you know, and, and I was just like, and it, so I vented to somebody else recently, but I was, these were my thoughts. One, if you don't like it, fucking change it, get involved, find out how it works, learn what a budget is, determine like how they're handling their money and why they're asking for the donations. <laughs> For those that can't see, David's <laughs> tapping his finger on his fat finger. Period. <laughs> well, Period. And like to, to do anything with Pride, uh, Pride event, that whoever's organizing the event, it costs a shitload of money to run that thing. Like uh, the Twin Cities Pride is going to have Kylie Ray Jepsen. Yeah, you don't think she's doing that out of the goodness of her heart, do you? Maybe she's like, "Oh, I would love to." How much you got to pay me is probably going to be part of that negotiation, the contract. Right. Yeah, I. Yeah, and and so like that, you know that that's the whole thing is you know it's like know what it takes to put on the thing before you start criticizing the thing. Hmm. Um. And like. Here's number two. So that's thought number one. Number two, know your facts. Because it seems like a lot of people were expressing a lot of goddamn opinions and not saying shit that was like quotable, like sourced. So presuming that when you go to the festival, there's going to be gates and people are going to be asking you to pay. Guess what? I went to the festival. Ain't no gates. Ain't nobody with a handout. Nobody asking me for money. Yep. Fact. And then, and then my number three thing. Shut the fuck up. I'm just I, I I I'm as I grow older, I'm less tolerant of people bitching to bitch. Because this is yeah. so. This is this is the 2022 mantra I have regarding the LGBTQIA community. We don't have time for this. Mm. There are forces out there working against us to take us back in time to when we didn't have rights, to when we feared for our lives, for when we really seriously like were unsure of what the future would be. Right. So how about we collectively gather together and work towards common things for the betterment of human society instead of bitching and moaning and complaining and belly aching and it's like come on so i love this but it's gonna have to come off for the sun get hot um <laughs> Sorry. first the scarf then the hair 
Well, this is just a headband. Oh, I thought it was like a. I thought it was a wiglet. Like oh, oh no, no, no. This is just a headband. It was a. So Amazon, honey, fascinator is great. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so in regards to your points um yes absolutely so it, the second like the first one in particular is the one that's the most i think to i'll start with um like jeff said shit costs money like we can't hold like you don't think the the school like the the city that you live in is gonna like oh you can we can totally block traffic on this street for five six hours um, as you are three four hours whatever you know depending on how long your parade is and preparation and everything we're gonna totally allow this to happen you know pro bono no money you know sure no that's 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 not true and then oh by the way you want to use this park yeah like sure. Absolutely. Take it. Do it. Yeah. And then, you know, these bitches will be complaining, like, oh, well, there's no entertainment, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Entertainment costs money. Right. And if you're not paying your drag queens or your your drag kings or your 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 uh, performers that are performing, probably, yes, they, I mean, you might not, you might, some might be volunteering and that's fine. But like to get like the, the you know, entertainment highlighters, highlighters highlights um that's gonna be money um i remember one year actually the year that was downtown the one i was talking about earlier um they had deborah cox um r&b um per- singer performer and i was super mm. excited and <laughs> then i got the tea um she had quite the contract and it was quite expensive and um, she was quite the bitch, apparently. So <laughs> there was that. Um, but again, you know, that's what they're going to have to deal with. Sometimes you deal with people, you know, that aren't the greatest, but you have to, you're thinking about the overall entertainment, you know, draw. Um, but again, all of these things cost money. And these aren't, com- this isn't just coming out of the kindness of strangers. This isn't just like people saying, as Jeff mentioned, like the whole, like, I'm doing this, you know, because I'm feeling generous. No, that's not, that's not how it happens. No, no. Well, and, and what we don't know, that's why I'm like, get active, get involved. Mm-hmm. Maybe they are giving you a discount because it is pride, because you're a nonprofit. Like, maybe their going rate is double. But you mm-hmm. wouldn't know that unless you were actually involved. So instead yeah. of belly aching about the however, however much money was spent on X, like find out what the you know the aspects are. Yeah. And at the same time, hold the representation accountable. Mm-hmm. So the reason I say that is it's happened and it will continue to happen, unfortunately, because humans are flawed and humans are in charge of our organizations and they do dumb shit. And, you know, they spend money on things that don't need to be spent on or they don't, you know, properly represent the community. And, you know, look at what happened in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, you know, had a pride that went on for many years and then a nonprofit started and they they decided or somehow I'm not quite sure what happened. They took over pride, totally shifted the focus, changed the location, did it for many years. Yes, it grew bigger. Yes, blah, blah, blah. Like people, it's debatable that it was made better, but it also corporatized a lot and they got super cr- criticized for it. And then some shit came out about the board and shenanigans and, oh, they're not around anymore. Mm. And other people took their place, like other entities. And now there's like multiple prides because I'm still hearing about this petty shit. This is what I was referring to earlier that pisses me off. It's like, well, I don't care for their attitude or they piss me off at this one event or blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, my God. God. <laughs> like, get over yourselves. Like, I don't like everybody in the world. I don't like all my goddamn coworkers. But you know what? I still work towards the same goals and try mm-hmm. to achieve the things. Exactly. Jiminy Christmas. Yeah, and agree. I agree. Like, if you have a problem with with, what's going on with your pride, your festival, they are always and will be happily to accept you as a volunteer or uh, put on get on their board to help them make their decisions. They will be happy for it. 
or volunteer. Yes. Like, like start at a low level. If there's something coming up and you don't have a lot of time or a lot of means available to you to, you know, to do stuff, just help out. Be like, hey, can, do you need help for like two hours, you know, or an hour, like anything? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. they will appreciate that someone's taken an interest to at least try to do something. And if they turn you away, well, then they boo-boo the fool. Like, mm. screw them. Like, <laughs> you know, they. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and trust me, most most committees are probably not going to turn you away. Because um, they need the help. Um, these things don't happen easily. And. Yes, there are people that are probably at the forefront and like on the committee and doing and they'll be the ones in the, you know, in the spotlight, as it were. But at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, everyone putting it together and getting it together and volunteering and doing what they can. Um, Yeah, I the big the other thing for me, as you kind of mentioned, was. Um, there's so much more going on and so many things that are going, that are happening that, you know, they're trying to take very, <laughs> and surprisingly with such ease, um, attempting to take rights away. And maybe we should be focusing on that as well. I'm not saying don't be prideful. I'm not saying don't have pride, but also remember what all this is for. Right. Um, I love pride as much as the next person i love being you know happy with who i am and um it took me a while to get there but i am Mm -hmm. and but i cannot be keep a blind eye to what's going on around us and what is continuing to happen um so you should neither (laughs) <laughs> pride is this while pride is important and this month is great there's still 11 months out of the year um where things are happening um i know it's been funny it's you know weird to kind of put this back into rupaul the drag race kind of things but one of the things i've been noticing is pretty much for the past few seasons They always end every episode with one or more queens coming out with those signs that are like, go vote and, you know, voting. Right. There's a reason why they're doing that, because we need to vote. Um, You may not think your vote is important because it's the small thing, or you may think, oh, it's just the, the primaries or this random bull thing. I'll just vote for the president and that'll be it. All those little things matter because the people that you vote for in those smaller positions are the ones that get things potentially pushed forward. And if those that are against you are the ones that are voting more and getting the people that they want in there, that's how they get their things done. So if you're not paying attention, you're not watching what's going on and you're not seeing what's, you know, the writing on the wall, then you're going to be surprised when suddenly your rights are put away. And I don't want to say this, well, it is Altino Shade, but it's happening now. And if we don't do it now, it might be too late. Well, and, and I think this what it all comes back to, Damon, you know, what you're saying is don't take it for granted. Mm-hmm. Like, I I think that goes to everything. Don't take for granted that, you know, you're going to have your job. Don't take for granted that you're going to, like, have, you know, your home, that you're going to have your family, that you're going to have everything in existence. It totally can change at any moment. And it actually does and will. And that's the part that I think comes with age, with experience. Um, Sometimes we call it wisdom. You know, that the maturity of, you know, the experiences in your life, you're like, oh, that can all flip. I mean, look at what the whole world had to go through. Two years ago, 
you know, a little bit over two years ago, people were just going about their lives, do, 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 you know, mm-hmm. just doing a thing, going to work, blah, blah, blah. You know, if you worked or if you were retired or, you know, living, mm-hmm. um, you know, with assistance, wh- whatever your circumstance was, you had a whole cycle of your life that was existing. And then it all changed for everybody. And I think that was, I think it's the part that we're, we're living through and it's very interesting. I was just reading an article this weekend. This is sort of a tangent, but hold on. Um, a study has revealed that PTSD can have genetic alternate alteration effects that can be carried on for at least two generations forward. Hmm. And the 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 study was focusing on the Holocaust and children of the survivors of the Holocaust and their children, but they also um, talked about like nine one one, like September eleventh, um, and I'm like, what just happened to the whole world? Like with the pandemic, it's it's quite significant the impact of you know experiences and what those things can turn into, and you know I think our broader you know community of you know um sexuality representation and and gender identity i think you know we we are in the midst of that right now and you know it's important to know what's going on and i agree with you that you know it starts small it starts local you know it really is about what's happening around you and then where you go from there and uh, I, i really do think the most recent u.s um election cycle over the past uh, six years has been this well eight years has been this kind of like sort of whirlwind experience and almost kind of like whiplash for some folks because i think we as a community really felt that we were doing just fine and everything was okay and look at the progress that we're making you know and and we were quite you know uh, content and we were kind of taking some things for granted and then stuff happened and everybody was like wait what huh like, mm. and, and, you know, and, and I think people are, you know, really uncomfortable and they're like, what do you mean? Some of my family, you know, has these beliefs or these thoughts and my neighbors, you know, and it's like, you know, and, and I kind of feel like we were, we spent a good amount of time with blinders on and I'm not blaming us for wearing the blinders. I think there were a lot of things that fed into that, that gave us limited optics to understand that there were people consistently around us who you know, felt different, but just maybe didn't say anything. But now they feel more, uh, you know, emboldened or whatever, you know, that they can be forthright and say certain stuff um, and not and not good things and not forthright. You know, going to Columbus Pride, one of the things that was discussed. So I went out um, to a local uh, gay owned establishment on Friday night and people were talking about how the festival was multiple days and some people had gone out Friday evening and not everyone was set up yet. But one of the comments by a couple of people that went was, yeah, and there was a crazy amount of law enforcement and they were really uh, commenting like in a way that they were uncomfortable about the amount of law enforcement. Like they were they were surprised, but it also kind of made them a little on edge. And I was thinking, right, like like can I didn't want to interject because it wasn't my conversation, but it's like, did y'all just miss what happened in Idaho? Like, it makes perfect sense to me that there's, like, heightened security. And it's been brought up for my own event that's coming up, you know, this coming weekend. You know, what kind of security is there going to be and, you know, and that kind of stuff. I mean, what was it, Iowa? One of the Midwest states in in one of the cities, um, the Pride event was canceled. The permit was pulled because they couldn't get law enforcement because, you know, of the Mm. the politics. Like, Mm. I mean – you know, it's like if you can't have if you can't have enough proper law enforcement for security, then you can't have the permits. So they pulled the permits and now there isn't going to be a pride event like wow. this is what I'm talking about. Like it happens on a local level, you know, and so there there is, I think, a balance to things. I realize there are people that are out there that are like, you know, F the police and they shouldn't have any presence at pride because, you know, of the things that they've done and, you know, and how they treat members of our community. Mm. And and I get that, but there's a part of me that's like, uh, be careful about that. Like, it's kind of painting with a very broad brush stroke, yeah. a, you know, a whole rank and file. And I feel like I, as much as I don't like saying it, there are bad actors. Like, there are people who, you know, do not represent everybody, um, you know, and it, it becomes a challenge. Uh, but, you know, it's that kind of stuff to to be aware of um, when it comes to that. So, yeah, well, I'm marching and stuff. I, you know, I was a little bit. 
I don't want to say uncomfortable, but I was I was anxious because I was like at any moment something might change. And because we were so far back, like so the parade steps off at 1030. We did not start walking until almost a quarter after 12. Wow. That's how long the parade was in front of us and how long it took for the parade to move all that time. Wow. Like it was kind of crazy. And the thing was, there was so many people, so many units for the parade. They ran out of street space on the main street. They planned on lining everybody up that they had to turn off onto a side street, which is where we were. And a woman came over and was sitting in the shade talking uh, with a friend of mine and I. Uh, and said, I, you know, is it mine? okay if I join you? She was like, I didn't know there were chairs. And we're like, no, go ahead and join us. And she said something about, you know, I thought we would have already been walking by now. And I said, yeah, well, step off. It was at 1030. I figured we'd be marching and walking by by 11 to 1115. 11, it was already going on 12 by then. You know, wow. people are going and getting food like they're going to eat. <laughs> I went a bunch of us. We used the restrooms like three times. I mean, we waited so long. But one of the things I said to this woman was, that "We're also in a blind spot. We have no idea what is happening ahead of us because we can't see down the the street, quote unquote. Like we're around a corner, half a oh. block away from the main block. I'm like, we have no idea what's going on. And all I kept thinking was, if there was an emergency or something, how would we even know? Like. How do we pass that information on? Yeah. And that was one of my comments about having such a large event. I was like, I think there are some things that they could probably do for improving communication. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they might already have that in place, but it's not known. My comment uh, to my friend was like, I think that they should have a, whoever is the lead of each of the the parade, you know, units. They should have they should have created a communication like either a Facebook message chat thread or a telegram thing or whatsapp it doesn't matter like pick a platform okay. invite all of these people and be like this is how we're going to communicate things as they go out so if there's a 10 minute delay in starting the parade that would have been helpful to know if something comes up you know and there's an issue you know let us know any of that kind of stuff um but right. we live in a day and age where i was kind of like who knows what the hell's happened you know and yeah. when would when would we know so to speak it just yeah Agreed. It's it's so funny to think, well, not funny. It's so weird to think about something like that, but it's things we have to think about now. Right. And I don't want to say we were naive 20 plus years ago or whatever. I just think the world has changed so drastically. Um, right. Safety is a major concern. Um, so, okay, I'll, I'll talk about this. Um, this is an Altino shade. <laughs> so, um, in 2016, as we all know, there was the Pulse massacre. Mm-hmm. Um, it happened in June. It happened during Pride Month. Um, mm-hmm. One of the sorry, gotta do this real quick. Oh, um, there was almost immediately after here in Cincinnati. I don't know about if it happened in Pennsylvania or Texas, but here in Cincinnati for pride, um, there was a group of people um, that were very much in, in interest of quote unquote, protecting the community. Mm -hmm. They said that they were going to um, open carry. Um, at the festival um, during Pride. Mm. And it caused a lot of concern because this was not, again, this was not an LGBTQ group of people. These were, I don't even want to call them allies because to be blunt, these were essentially open carry fanatics that were using the massacre as a way to push their agenda they were using the the shooting as a way to promote that well if you know people were there and they had guns or whatever they could have potentially taken this person down yada 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 and i saw it happening and i got scared Um, I do not like guns. I'll put it out. I'll say that first. Um, 
really don't like guns. And it bothered me. It shook me. Mm. That these people that are in no way involved, had never been involved with Pride or with the LGBTQ community, with any of this shit, were taking their this initiative and trying to protect us. One, we don't need to protect. We don't. We can protect ourselves first of all. But again, you're you're not really there to do this for out of the goodness of your heart. You're not doing this to protect us. You're doing this to force your agenda. Mm. And I remember posting on the um, there was a Facebook you know creation for the Pride Festival. And I remember posting, like, do you guys know about this? Have you seen this? Like, what are you planning on doing? I don't feel if I'm going to be safe if this is happening and you're allowing it to happen. Because (laughs) one wrong move, one argument, one something, something going astray, awry, someone misconstruing some information or construing a detail, And again, it was fresh on our minds. There would have been another pulse Mm. or just another mass shooting or something. Um, So it, at first I I was like, I'm not going because the chorus was singing and I, I was like, I'm not going to go to Pride. I'm not going to march. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just not going to go. Because I was scared. And I'll own it. It was, it was fear. Um, and I had a couple of friends um, and people on the chat that kind of mentioned it. Like, don't, don't let them take this away from you. Um, and I realized they're right. I shouldn't let these assholes, these people that are doing not doing this for anything else but their own personal feelings, have nothing to do with our protection or whatever, get in the way of me enjoying pride. I made a compromise with myself. And, and again, thank you, Jim, for doing all of this. But um, I knew when the, con- the chorus was performing. And this was one of the first times that I... I didn't go to the festival. I didn't watch the parade. I literally went to do the performance and then left. Now, Jim, um, in his wonderful, beautiful person, he is, um, we got tickets to see um, Chrissy Chinwith uh, perform at the Pops, which was at Riverbend, which was just down the way. Mm-hmm. So it kind of helped to kind of have a reason, quote unquote, to leave. Um, but it gave me enough of a feeling of escape, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I knew I didn't have to stay down there the whole time. I knew I had someplace else to be to where if it were odd that I just suddenly showed up and then left, there was a reason for it. Um, and I was happy for it. Because again, like it's, it gave me, um, I didn't hide because of this stupid bullshit that was happening. Um, I decided to face that fear and attend. But, you know, I don't know what they could have, what they would have done, what the committee could have done. Um, they've had issues in the, you know, past, and I think even Columbus has had some issues in the past about hate groups and what have you showing up and spitting their shit. Um, there was a year where one of the hate groups um, actually tried to get a booth at the festival and they were denied and they made a big fuss about it 
because you know the event is supposed to be all inclusive yada 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 but you're not including us and it's like well well you know we know you hate us so why would we give you a space to spew your hate mm -hmm. <laughs> like you can you can be you can do what every other fucking protester and bullshit that comes down here does and be on the corner and get your permits because you got to have permits sometimes to use your speakers and whatever but you can do that and you can do it there you don't need to be in this festival which is all about love and acceptance and and pride You don't get to do that. Right. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that people, you know, um, kind of forget about, you know, the, the challenges uh, in within our own personal lives and, you know, the safe spaces that we need for ourselves and for the broader community. And yet at the same time, pushing, you know, ourselves to be comfortable and discomfort and how we work through that, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and where to go from there. Yeah. I mean, I, I did that technically in walking in the parade yesterday. It was one of the things, you know, I thought about, I was asked, you know, if I wanted to join them, but I knew that there was like a whole size, like capacity dynamic. Like you can only have so many people in each contingency mm. like unit. Um, and from the sounds of it, they had gotten pretty close to the max and I didn't want to take somebody else's spot necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was kind of one of those things. And, uh, you know, I had made a new acquaintance that was a friend of, you know, uh, friends of mine and they had offered, I could hang out with them instead if I wasn't going to march. And I was like, you know what, just do it. Like, you know, it's not necessarily all that long. The weather's not that horrible. Um, you know, have an experience and, and do that thing. So I did, but, you know, I walked into that, meaning, you know, I chose to be a part of it and to walk and put myself into a thing that I've not done before. Um, and it was an experience and I'm glad that I did it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and it made me think about like, what is it like to be the marshal of the parade? Like, you know what I mean? To be in the vehicle, to like wave at everybody and all that kind of stuff and have people want to come see you, um, it's a thing. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I think the big thing, you know, for this year is, you know, celebrate how you celebrate, be supportive, how you can be supportive. Um, you know, over the most recent years, we've had a lot of different things that have come and gone uh, or come and stuck around, you know, be supportive of local, you know, owned businesses, mm -hmm. small businesses, um, you know, pay attention to when companies are just trying to, you know, get the gay dollar because they can. Um, yeah. And yet at the same time, uh, you know, make sure that, you know, that, that there's, you know, some equity that's happening for, for those in our community. Like I thought of this yesterday, we were on our way walking back from the festival to get the car and we passed a woman who, um, was in a, a wheelchair and she was being pushed by somebody. It made me think about my dad because of his disability. And it got me thinking about, you know, how that's a, a portion of our community that we don't necessarily have representation with a whole lot. You know, people who have mobility issues or access, you know, to things. Um, and Columbus is a pretty progressive city in that, you know, it has curb cuts and, you know, um, you know, and, and just things that people take for granted if, if you've mm -hmm. not had to push somebody in a wheelchair or have them with a scooter or whatever, you probably don't quite pay attention to those things. Um, but it, it that's the kind of stuff that I mean, you know, that comes to light and you're like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, what are we um, doing with that stuff? And uh, last but not least, I'm going to get off my soapbox about the things with pride because uh, I feel like we're wrapping up for the love of everything. Clean up. So if it's a parade, if it's a festival and there's something going on, put the stuff in a receptacle. <laughs> just because it's pride, just because you're having a good time, don't be trashy. Don't be messy. Like, like the city of Columbus literally had a whole flank of like, I think, eight street sweepers. Just like after a big parade, like a ticker tape or whatever, like they come down 
the street and literally sweep the street of the like confetti glitter like crap the, you know the flotsam and jetsam <laughs> that ends up on the street but while i'm walking on the sidewalk there was so much stuff on the side of the street like it wasn't awful but it was like little like postcards and fans and like you know uh -huh. just, just detritus you know like yeah. you know half empty water bottles and just i was like oh my god people like just clean up after yourselves take your shit and put it in a trash can <laughs> or in a proper recycling bin like you know yeah we only have one planet right now and and none of us in this current lifetime are probably going to get the hell out of here if we keep trashing it so please be nice to it yeah agreed um god oh i could talk well yeah pride like again I get that it's outdoors and I get that you're outside and I get that it's a festival and that you're walking around and you may not be right next to a trash bin, recycling bin, what have you, but just hold it for a little bit longer. You're going to get one hit one eventually. Just hold on to it, throw it away. I used to, um, I used to, when I would go down to Pride, and I probably will, I carry little windows, like drawstring backpacks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. inside it, I usually will bring a um, plastic bag. The purpose of the plastic bag is if I have water or I have something in there that I need to, or I've um, got a you know, snack and I need to throw stuff away, I can throw it in the bag and then... When I'm done, it's separated from everything else in my little bag, like my sunscreen and my little pride penalia. And when I get to a trash can, I can eventually throw it all away. Or I can fucking take it home and then, you know, split the recycling and, you know, whatever out, but, you know, if I need to. But for God's sake, if you don't, like, if someone gives you something... Like if they're, you know, people in the festival, they give you a little like a a coupon or a, a, a um, business card or a little flyer or whatever. If you don't want it, don't take it. As simple right. as that. And if you're one of those people that are giving those out and someone you're handing it to someone and they don't take it, move the fuck on. There's no need to like, you know, try to get someone to take something. Because what's going to happen is what we were just talking about. They're going to look at it, or they're not going to look at it, and they're just going to drop it. And it's going to be there until someone comes and picks it up. Our right. city, I don't know about Columbus, but I know Cincinnati was notorious for saying, um, like, please be careful with the thing that you pass out. Because um, they may find you if it's your name or your business's name on the items and it's a it becomes you know a trash deter you know it becomes trash it's a meant to be it was a way to like kind of deter people from passing things out like small things mm -hmm. um but it was also a a it, i think it kind of worked because i don't recall it being as big an issue now i'm talking about the the fest the parade i'm not talking so much about the festival um so far, another thing all, all together. But at least there, if you're walking around and going to the booths, you're choosing, choosing where to go as you walk around. So again, if you're not interested in that Toyota dealership that's you know out there putting out themselves at Pride and set their stuff up, don't go to that booth. You're not going to get anything that you want from there. Um, one of my favorite years... <laughs> the festival was 2015. Um, we had just gotten the house, and I went walking around Pride, the festival, and I signed up for every fucking thing related to house to a house. Um, there was a contest for at Kroger, I think, for groceries for a year. There was um, <laughs> when we ended up using there was the um, gutter shutter. Um, that we ended up getting our cutters from. There was the um, Gorilla Garage that we did the, um, we got a new garage floor. Um, and then there was, there was Bath Fitters. 
And the main reason I signed up for these things was because I just got a house. And I was like, oh, hey, it might be fun to, like, win something and maybe update something in the house. Did I win anything? Absolutely not. <laughs> but um, I had contacts and information. Um, and some of them actually, the gorilla ones in particular, they called um, to maybe schedule an appointment. And they had someone come in and um, they convinced us to get a um, garage, epoxy garage floor um, that, yeah, no one sees. But it's there, and it's fabulous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, you know, it. I did that because there was intent behind that. I may not have seen it otherwise, and I'm glad I saw it. Um, but I, if if it's not your thing, you don't have to make to take the effort to go there. Right. You know. But you know. Gather information when you're at Pride as well. Know what's out there. Know that what's quote unquote supportive and what's not. Um, if you go to say a men's chorus concert and you get their program and there are advertisers in that program, um, maybe I don't know. Use those advertisers because you know the that they're LGBT. Yeah. Support support local businesses. Right. <laughs> and, and entertainment functionaries, you know, such as your local gay men's course. <sighs> Watch <his> hands. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <sighs> I think that's the end. These guys go to prides more than I do. I haven't been to a pride in right. over a decade. I'll be proud, bitches. There you go. Uh, sorry for those watching live with the the uh, disconnects. I'm hoping to have a neat podcast and video up late, or it might take a little longer than normal. But there's, if you would like to contact us about anything, pardon your pride events. Like this thing is doing, you can definitely do that by uh, uh, leaving a comment on our blog at cubsoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 COL POC. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Or you can join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can find that out at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can also get various accoutrements, such as a consent is my foreplay shirt in various styles. Um, maybe a proud out loud shirt. I think that might still be up there. Um, which I'm wearing. I designed ah, this myself a couple years ago. You. But the consent is my foreplay shirts. Yeah, that was done by Spanishy. Uh, those are at sazzle.com slash comes out loud. But this, if you want to get more smashy designs, you can also go to his T public uh, page at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud. Or if you want to send us uh, a little bit of cash uh, just as a donation, you can do that at paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Amazon, Audible, Spotify, and pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box Tap, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box Something or Other, or Windjum, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, on Twitch, where I stream Bears and Dragons. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as TheaterCup79 on most bear-related sites. Um, that is T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Um, you can also find me there, Theater Cub 79 on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Happy Pride. Have a good one.